uh, involve themselves in the science. And not all of them involve themselves even in this. He said, one of the things it requires, he mentioned three things, and I'll, hopefully I'll remember all three of them. One of the things is azima, that the person must have the determination. Because when you go out there and you speak about people, you got to realize people are going to attack you back. They're going to disagree with you. So you have to be determined and have, of course, ikhlas lillah, that you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to bring your, make yourself big, not to belittle someone, whatever the other reasons, but it should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve his deen. Not, not all the ulama, they even want to get into controversy. They just want to teach ilm. They want to teach the people these beautiful books, issues in fiqh, issues in aqidah, issues in uh, language, Arabic language, balagha, whatever. Asul of fiqh, quiet, fiqiyya. They want to do this. They don't like controversy. So they don't have the azima. And even if they have the knowledge. Another thing is you need ilm. Some of, the, some of them, and, and you have to be able to articulate that knowledge. So the Shaykh was mentioning, I remember, he mentioned about some ulama that they're excellent in speaking, but they're not as good in writing. And vice versa, they're not as good as writing, they're, they're good in writing, but they're not good in speaking. So for them, that's another reason why they avoided it. And they might have been ahlan, they might have actually had the knowledge to do that, but they didn't have the ability to articulate that properly. You know, the manners of discussion and debate. So these are important things that we have to realize. That even the people who have knowledge, they don't all get involved in it, nor should they all get involved with it. It takes, it takes things. It takes the azimah, the shaksiyah, that you got to realize you put yourself under fire, everybody's going to come attacking you. Me, myself, I don't really have the shaksiyah. I've mentioned a few individuals on occasions, and I'm, I'm leaving it because I don't like people threatening me. I don't like people... Uh, uh, talking crazy to me and, and, and making take fear of me and, and stuff like this. I don't really like that. <laughs> but when it comes to extreme situations, then I'll go out there and I'll do that. You know, talking about the Ahbash, people causing us harm in our community, then I'll do it. Because I feel it's a, it becomes an obligation upon me if I have knowledge about that particular area and I've studied and I have the tools to share and hopefully get rid of some of those shibahat or at least repel some of the shibahat or make people aware of the shibahat. So it takes that azima. The other thing we mentioned, it takes ilm, it takes knowledge. Not everybody has the same degree of knowledge. And it takes uh, the third thing, and I, I believe it, this was the third thing, or unless it was incorporated in ilm, but I think this was the third thing <coughs> it, that he mentioned uh, was about that a person, uh, not everybody has the ability to make ta'bir. You know, they're not all good at writing and, and re making refutations with elm like that. They're just not a good writer. But they may have a lot of elm and they're an excellent speaker, excellent khatib, excellent whatever, but they might not be a good author. And some vice versa. They're a good writer and so, but they're not a good speaker, not a khatib. So it takes characteristics and it takes shaksiya. And not everybody should get involved in it. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of people who just involved themselves in it and they should not. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good and forgive this evil, forgive anything evil that I said. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan.